everybody, it's Emily, and today we are going to be recapping La Creme de la Creme, and that is Akatar by Sarah J. Moss, or A Court of Thorns and Roses, as it was originally titled. New book for this is coming out February 16th, 2021, and I am looking forward to it. I'm just as devastated as all you guys are about the cover change, you can probably tell, but if 2020 taught us anything, it is that we must continue on. We are going to be getting ready for this by recapping this wonderful book series. I say wonderful book series because it is one of my favorites. This, however, is not the best book in the series. So if you started with just this one, didn't like it, please I urge you to continue on because it just gets better and better after this. Little word of warning though, this is a new adult book. So if you're not a new adult or an old adult, I wouldn't recommend reading this as it does have mature content in it. With that being said, I'm going to try my absolute best to do as unbiased a recap of this book as I can. This is my second time reading through it, and if it's your second time reading through it, you know what I'm talking about, but let's get started. Our story begins, as all good fantasy stories do, in the middle of the forest, where we meet our protagonist, Feyre, who is hunting to feed her starving poor family. Well, she runs into a doe, but also a huge, massive wolf, which could potentially be one of these scary fae she's been hearing stories about from across the wall. Who knows? Farrah don't care. She kills that thing with an ash arrow and the doe and the wolf pelt are hers. She goes home where we meet her less than fantastic family. She has her father, who is an uninspired woodcarver, who used to be super rich, but he lost it all to these creditors who actually bashed his knee in as well, so he's been pretty lazy ever since. We also have the eldest sister, Nesta, who is pretty shrewd, and the middle sister, Elaine, who is kind of whiny, but also innocent and youthful somehow. Well, Thera is our youngest daughter, but she promised her mother on her deathbed that she would take care of her family, and that's what she does. Day and night, she hunts and cuts wood and does all these things to keep her poor family fed. The next day, she takes the pelt to the village to sell and there meets a mercenary who's telling stories about attacks from these fae. And we actually experience one of these attacks right away. That night, Feyre and her family are just hanging out in their house when a beastly giant man busts into their house and takes Feyre away, saying that she killed an innocent fairy named Andras, and so the treaty calls for a life for a life. Well, this is a nice-ish brute kind of guy, and so he just says that instead of killing her, he will just keep her locked up for the time being. He takes her to the spring court of the fae land Prithia, and we learn his name is Tamlin, and he is High Lord of the Spring Court. And when not in beastly form, him and his entire court have to wear masks. We meet Lucian and Auburn Hair, High Lord, nope, he's not a High Lord, he's a High Fae, there's a difference, of the Autumn Court. Weird side note about him is that he has like this metal cyborg kind of eye. Well, he has no love for Feyre. He wishes that Tamlin would have just killed her, but at least we know how he feels about her. Tamlin, we can't get a read on this guy. A few things that we quickly learn is that there is a curse over this house, and that's why they all have to wear masks. Also, some of Tamlin's power has been taken away, but he's still a pretty powerful dude. The last thing is that there is this blight that's spreading across the Feylands, and it may eventually bleed over into the human world. Feyre freaks out a little bit about her family, but Tamlin assures her that they are safe and well taken care of as long as she promises to stay there with him. She begins going out on hunts with Lucian, where they run into creatures like the Bogey, because he's not supposed to be getting through the wards of the Spring Court, but hey, the Blight's affecting everything. Tamlin's the only one who can go kill him, but her and Lucian kind of develop a bond and a friendship. Lucian then tells her about a guy named the Surreal, whom if she catches him, he will answer any question that she has for him. Feyre, just a human girl, does this and catches the Surreal. Well, he tells her a couple of things about this land across the sea, this blight might potentially be a female, and also that if she wants to survive all of this, she just needs to hang out with the High Lord of the Spring Court. And that's exactly what she does. 
So she's then attacked by the Naga, she lets the cereal go and kills two of the Naga, but Tamlin arrives and kills the other two. It's pretty cool though that she's just a human and she can do all this stuff. Her and Tamlin spend a lot of time together, they start falling in love. She is a painter and likes to paint, so he gets her a bunch of paints. She paints some of the things that she's seen there. A fairy who had his wings ripped off by this potential blight female lady. Everything's going greatly until it is time for a festival! It's Callan May, or Fire Night as we refer to it here in the human world, where Tamlin has to conjure up a bunch of magic in order to supply the rest of his lands for the rest of the year. Well, in order to do this, he has to go into this beastly form, kill something, and then he has to find a maiden. Well, Pharaoh's super jealous about this, but we find out that he was only thinking of her the entire time. Before Feyre is locked up on Callan May, though, she runs into a dark fae who potentially saves her from some fairies who are just looking for some Callan May fun. Feyre and Tamlin really start to fall in love now until Resand, the dark fae guy she just met, shows up telling him that this Amarantha chick says that time is up and that it is time for him to come to her court and be with her. Well, Tamlin freaks and sends Feyre home as fast as he possibly can but not before telling her that he loves her. Well, Feyre, not wanting to burden him with her love, does not say it in return. Once she gets back to her home, she finds out that her father and sisters are living this lavish lifestyle in this mansion. Tamlin really did take care of them. They also believed that she was off taking care of a dying aunt, except for Nesta. She remembered everything the entire time and she's not having any of this. Well, Thera one day finds out that Claire Better, a girl in her town, and her entire family die during a fire. And she knows that she has to go back and save Tamlin because this is the name that Thera gave Resan instead of her own. Back at the Spring Court, Alice kind of clears everything up for us. She's the handmaiden who's been with Thera this entire time. She tells her that there is another land besides Prithia. It is called Hybern, and there's a wicked king there who wants to conquer all the humans. Well, one day he sends Amarantha, an ambassador, over to Prithia to kind of open trade up between the two lands. During the war with humans and Fae, Amarantha's sister falls in love with this human named Jurian, who ultimately betrays and kills her. So Amarantha does not have a lot of love for the humans. Amarantha then takes a lot of the High Lord's powers and curses Tamlin because she kind of has the hots for him. He says, though, that he's not going to get with her, that he would rather get with a human. So she curses him, saying that he has to wear these masks in his entire court until he can find a woman to love him. But not just any woman, a woman who has hate in her heart for Fae and who actually kills a Fae. That's why he's been sending out Andrus to be murdered by his love. What a great guy Tamlin is. All Thera had to do was say, I love you, but we all know how that worked out. So instead, Thera goes under the mountain to get her love back. There she meets Amarantha, who's a really creepy chick. She actually has the finger bone of Jurian around her neck and she wears his eye, but still tied to his soul in a ring on her finger. She tells Feyre that if she can complete three of her trials, that she will let her and Tamlin go and break the curse. Or she can solve a riddle. Three trials or a riddle. We'll have to see how this goes. Feyre's first task is to kill this giant worm thing called the Middengard, which she does using bones and mud, but not before she rips her arm to shreds. Well, Rhysian shows up to offer his assistance. In turn, though, she has to spend a week out of every month in the night court with him for the rest of her life. She agrees and he heals her arm, but also puts a huge flowing tattoo with an eye in the middle of her palm. This kind of bonds them. He actually starts using her as an escort to many of his parties and balls just to make Tamlin jealous in order to make him angry at Amarantha, maybe in order to fuel some kind of fire to make him want to kill her. We learn a little bit more about Reese during this time, where Tamlin shapeshifts into claws and furs, Reese shapeshifts into powerful wings and talons. Feyre's second trial arrives and her goal is to basically solve a word puzzle 
and save her and Lucian, but she can't read. So who helps her but none other than the High Lord of the Night Court himself? He uses the tattoo to tell her which answer is the right one. The last trial is where it starts to get really dark. Feyre's goal is to kill three innocent Fey using an ash arrow through the heart. Well, the third Fey ends up being Tamlin. She was tricked. Her senses tricked her. And she actually remembers many of their conversations, though, and that he might potentially have a heart of stone. So she does it. She stabs him through the heart. But it doesn't go through because he does have a heart of stone. She wins all the trials. But Amarantha's not having any of this. She says that the only way she was going to instantly release Feyre is if she solved the riddle. She begins torturing Feyre, and I kind of think Feyre dies? But we see her soul in Reese while Reese starts attacking Amarantha. It's a whole big mess. Tamlin ultimately heals himself up and kills Amarantha. And the High Lords grant Feyre her life back. But not just her life. They grant her the ability to become a High Fey herself. Editor's note here. Feyre actually answers the riddle. And that's how Tamlin can kill Amarantha. The answer to the riddle was love. How wonderful. All is right in the world except for Feyre's nagging guilt about how she killed three innocent Fey. But anyways, before Tamlin and Feyre go off back to the spring court, hand in claw, she talks with Reese, who has this really strange, shocked epiphany come over him right before vanishing. I don't really know what that's all about, but I am super looking forward to their Hades, Persephone kind of vibe in the next book. This is where our book ends. Everybody happy? We'll have to see what goes on in the next one. I will be recapping that for you guys. If you all read this book for the second time, let me know what you thought about it in the comments below. I'm kind of curious if you guys thought the same things as I did uh, or if you saw anything different this time. But until next time, have a good one. Bye.